Okay, yeah. There you are with You Asked For It with your regular hosts, Levi Cox and Austin Francis Guy Walsh. Hi, everyone. <laughs> we had a little break with Austin away last week. I think he needed it. I did. Yeah. You need to recharge, reset a little bit. So take a break. Yeah, take relax, relax. It's summer, so uh, I don't know if we realized quite the commitment of having a weekly show was going to be, but uh, it's been a lot of work, but it's also been a lot of fun, and I hope you keep tuning in and enjoy our conversations. We always are taking suggestions, although we usually have our own agenda as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so first off, uh, for this week, have you asked for it? I want to talk about last week's episode with Rachel Keeper. What a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> I had so much fun reuniting with uh, Rachel on here. She's We're, so fun. Yeah. She's a hilarious person. Totally. Like, I love watching her. Our girls just want to have fun episode was definitely a hit. So either we're going to have to give you a break every once in a while and bring her back. <laughs> I'd be into that. <laughs> or we're going to have her on here with you. So She looks much nicer on uh, camera than than me too. I think those guys out there really like watching her. Well, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, there's a lot of guys and girls who like watching you too. Well, that's true, yeah. <laughs> uh, Rachel, if you're listening, we just had like such a great time and you know that we're already plotting on our next... Uh, next uh, assault on Jess FM here with our, <laughs> our, our, our hilarity because <laughs> I watched that episode more than once and like laughed out loud I loved your beauty secrets you're a hilarious woman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's your beauty secrets? Well, I don't get much sleep and I wear a lot of makeup. <laughs> I, I, I loved it and I had so much fun playing uh, the game you asked for it or no would you rather uh, that we're going to play tonight on the show. So I'm pretty excited to play that I'm with you. I'm excited for a Levi and Austin edition of that one. Yeah. <laughs> I got some filthy questions. You made filthy questions? Maybe. You'll <laughs> have to see Levi. Okay. <laughs> um, tonight's episode, we're going to talk about some current events in Lethbridge. We're going to hit a little bit of nerd stuff. We're going to talk about edible marijuana. And, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about what's happening around town. Cool. So first off, how was White Court, Austin? White Court was fun. <laughs> it was a nice little break to get up and see my parents for the weekend. So uh, I got to see my whole family. Everyone came into town, so that was fun. Mostly I just really overate and <laughs> got drunk in the hot tub <laughs> like every day, all day. So Austin's from a small town called White Court, Alberta. Mm -hmm. And before that, Boyle, Alberta. And Alberta is such a big province. You drive for like seven and a half, eight hours, and you're only halfway. You're only just really far. Because like we live like right pretty much at the border of southern Alberta, and they're a little over halfway point for for Alberta, and it just keeps going, going and going. Yeah, I didn't realize how far it let, or Alberta spreads. Yeah, because White Court's about a seven hour drive from here, and at least. Yep, nowhere near the northern border. So tell us a little bit about your hanging out with your newfie family. What, what were you doing? <laughs> what, what's up? A lot of dogs. I saw a lot of dogs. Yeah, we just hung out on our deck. It was super hot up there too, and like 30 degrees down here, but probably 32 to 35 up there, and just sat outside. Got ate alive by mosquitoes because there's a lot of mosquitoes up there this time of year too. So for me, when I go up to White Court and hang out with your family, uh, most of them are newfie. Is that like common of the people who are in White Court? There's a lot of new. Yeah, there's just like a lot of Newfies everywhere. Is Newfie a nice term? Are we allowed to say Newfie? Well, I think they prefer Newfoundlander. Newfoundlander. But I don't care. Is there a lot of Newfoundlanders in White Court? <laughs> uh, there's a couple, yeah. yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> Mostly quite a few. my family. Yeah, I love it. We go up there. Lots in Fort Maddox, lots in Grand Prairie. Yeah. We eat a lot. You're right. We eat a lot. That's good. good food. We put on a Jigs dinner, a little scoff. <laughs> Did you? Uh, we didn't this time. Oh. I was not that upset, though. Too much salt for me when it's this hot out. Um, so this past weekend we had a lot of fun. Uh, down here on 3rd Avenue we had the Street Wheelers. Mm -hmm. Or as I like to call it, Straight Pride. <laughs> okay, Okay. so when people were making fun of us for Gay Pride a few years ago, I said, don't, they said, where's Straight Pride? I said, don't worry, next week Street Wheelers, there's your Straight Pride. So, uh, but even gay people like nice cars and good music and, you know, beer gardens, so. We had a wicked time at the street wheelers, watching them go by, right by catwalk. We start, we just turn our clients' chairs. We start watching and enjoying and breathing that exhaust fumes actually, coming through our building. I actually like it. <laughs> and it's the one time a year I wear a baseball cap and do like redneck drag. Redneck drag. That's what yeah, I call it. I try, I try to look like a guy for a night. Yeah, <laughs> a butch like guy. A Joe Dirt. <laughs> Some NASCAR crew. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was so fun to have uh, the concert for our cause, Beer Gardens. 
sponsored by none other than Jess, Jess FM. FM and Jess TV <laughs> and you can find us on where can you find us? Oh, www.facebook.com slash jessfm. Or www.jessfm.ca. And check out Jess TV. So, um, at the Concert for a Cause Beer Gardens, this beer gardens was so cool. It was on the side of SAG, and then there was beer gardens, a rock band, two rock bands. Right alongside the street, too, so you could watch the band and watch the cars at the same time. Yeah, because typically if your beer gardens are inside the park, you can't see the cars going by. So mm -hmm. the setup this year, bravo to everyone involved in that, because that was spectacular. The fact that you could drink a beer in public, listen to rock, live rock music. And they brought in pizza and after, they, my two, favorite thing. Two guys in a pizza had great <laughs> pizza there. Um, I know it was Alyssa McQuaid and Old School were two of the bands. Yeah. Um, and James Castorelli, you did an amazing job hosting that event. So James Castorelli, with your your vocal talents and your hosting abilities, I great just job. I love how he talks. He's still like da 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 da. Like his, his inflection is up and down when he speaks. Really, James, you can't help but listen to him. Yeah. He sounds like he should be on radio. And he, he is, is on the radio. James Gastrelli, he is on the morning show. You can catch him on Jess FM here. Mm -hmm. And we are going to have to do a show together because this guy is a riot. And the, we, the way we actually met was not through Jess FM. It was at the Comic Con, do you remember? Yeah. I, uh, I said I couldn't be hypnotized, but guess what? He did. He hypnotized you. And I became a giggling maniac. Because he does this little thing, and I won't do it directly to him, but he like... <laughs> dial it up. <laughs> Hypnotized him to like when he put his hand in the middle of his stomach and he says, "Dial it up." Then Levi like starts laughing and literally, I almost peed my pants. Yeah, I, I did it like, actually to James just as an example because I didn't want to do it to you because yeah. you get mad, you laugh so hard, and he all of his hair on his arms like stood up. He's like, Ugh, "Don't do that! <laughs> Don't do that!" <laughs> so James, great job on hosting, and I heard that the beer gardens was a success. The concert for a cause was a big success, mm -hmm. and they're even looking at expanding it next year. Yeah, so I think next year there may be a uh, different location. Uh, we, we think the beer gardens might be over by the fountain, so a bigger section. Mm -hmm. You can sit there, drink, listen to the music, watch the cars, take in the exhaust, street wheels. <laughs> There's is a great weekend. Um, so such a busy weekend for downtown Lethbridge yeah. because Saturday night, uh, there was a lot of commotion in the park, and you'd think it was still Street Wheelers, but it was the Bon... Bonadori. Bonadori Japanese Dance Festival. Mm -hmm. And this is really cool because it celebrates um, our Japanese uh, heritage and culture in Lethbridge in Alberta. Mm -hmm. And it's like a sad beginning, but it's got a happy ending because like a lot of people were, were shipped here... In internment camps. Internment camps, yeah. and from internment camps in B.C., and like the, the Japanese people were not really treated well here in Alberta, and in fact they were told they couldn't, I think, go into Lethbridge. They were like put out in farms, yeah. and they weren't even allowed to come into Lethbridge. Like that's brutal, and everything had been stripped of them. But they slowly built empires, and now all the best corn, uh, fa corn on the cob families and sugar beet families are all mustard. Ma mustard are are these Japanese families? So they actually turned their bad situation into a really good situation. They took their lemons and made lemonade. And now they're rolling in it. So Tabor is a huge example of this. We have a lot of uh, Japanese culture or uh, people coming from there as well. Mm -hmm. um, another th interesting fact is Lethbridge is known for having great Chinese food. Do you know that? I didn't. Yeah, so like Shanghai is like a, an icon here, but we're, we were always known for having great uh, Chinese restaurants. Little known fact though, is these were typically not owned by Chinese, they were typically Japanese restaurants but the Chinese food was popular so they made it. But now... That's very interesting. Yeah, that's where a lot of the, a lot of the good Jap Chinese restaurants were actually Japanese families. But it also led Lethbridge to having great sushi. Yeah, we do have really good sushi here. Yeah, so I will say, after visiting oh. Japan and then going to Osho and Lighthouse, it's comparable. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm like eating small town sushi or whatever. Yeah, Lethbridge you wouldn't think so, but we actually have a great sushi choices like uh, Coco just downstairs mm -hmm. is, is uh, very traditional and delicious and yeah. Shanghai style. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Kyoto style. Kyoto style. Yeah, Shanghai. why did I say that? That's so well, we were mixing up uh, Jap Japanese and Chinese. Mm -hmm. maybe. You were just talking about Shanghai <laughs> restaurant. So anyway, we, we then also with the university, there's a lot of students. Like we have a large Japanese influence here. Mm -hmm. And I just always was yeah amazed by that. And it's probably why the desire to go to Japan and Japan's actually got two of our sister cities with Lethbridge's uh, Japanese cities. Mm -hmm. And Austin and I just went to Japan this year, and yeah. it was amazing. It was very fun. So we did that Saturday night, 
The Bon Adori Japanese Dance Festival. Yeah, great food, great people, so much fun dancing, so colorful. I'm watching it. We got a picture with like a cat mascot, little, little like Neko cat. And it made me think we were <laughs> back in Japan. So then on Sunday, it was the show and shine for street wheelers. So mm. this is where all the hottest cars that come uh, visit Lethbridge for this weekend. They park all in Gulf Gardens, and it's a show and shine. And the weather was beautiful oh all gosh. weekend too. And like speaking of hot cars, they were like really hot cars that day. Yeah, we have 32 degree weather, which for <laughs> you know everyone else maybe that's not that hot, but yeah. here in Alberta that's that's hot for us. Yeah, we were dealing with some 32, and it was hot. Cars were great, and I don't know what it was this year with street wheelers, but it was way bigger than last year. Mm -hmm. So street wheelers really upped their game. We had a lot more cars in the show. A lot more people enjoying the downtown. It was packed down here. It was a lot of fun. And so I like to say it'd be a growing trend because it brings in something fun to do. Yeah. I would say last year I like watched it kind of from inside the salon with a little bit of apprehension, like, oh, it's cars, whatever. But I actually got out and enjoyed it this year and I had a lot of fun. Mm hmm. You're just a like day drinking, <laughs> like an excuse for day drinking in there. Um, yeah, I've never been a big fan of like, hot rods and cars. I mean, I mm. like the obvious things like, oh, I'm going to say such l obvious cars, Corvettes and Lamborghinis growing up were cool, but I've never been like someone who's obsessed with like vehicles. Mm -hmm. I can tell when one looks nice or if I like the color, but that's about my car knowledge. Mm -hmm. I'm more like into the food scene. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's good Give food trucks. There's good food trucks. Good so food team so <laughs> Street Wheelers was a good excuse just to hang out. And, yeah. And so, uh, now, this isn't quite in the way I wanted to go with our topics, but uh, Saturday night before Street Wheelers on Sunday, we went to a movie. We did. We went and saw Ant-Man and Wasp. So for all you Marvel fans and nerd fans and Marvel movie fans out there, that um, that was a very fantastic show. And they really did great development of the characters. Mm. And I actually think the Ant-Man series is one of my favorite out of all the Marvel shows. I think so. it's going to take off now, too, because... I don't know, in Avengers and in Ant-Man and stuff. Like, I thought he was g cool, but, you know, like, now he's really got a lot of development, and well, do you I know love him with the Wasp. Well, who's cool as the Wasp? And yeah. Wasp was an original Avenger who they kept out of the Avenger movies and gave Black Widow kind of her role. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see Way Wasp cooler. stepping up uh, her game. Yeah. yeah. Well, fun fact about the actress from, from that, too, Evangeline Lilly, yep. who plays the Wasp, yep. is Albertan. Yes. She is from St. Albert, Alberta. So the new Avengers superstar, the Wasp, Angelina... Evangeline Lilly. Evangeline Lilly is an Albertan grown girl. Mm -hmm. So see that world? Our gorgeous Albertans getting out there, becoming big Disney, Marvel, superhero stars. Well, she's already had such a cool career, too, with like The Hobbit and like Lost, the television series. So Hobbit, Lost. Yeah, she's in so much. And Avengers now. She can literally like go and do Comic-Cons for the rest of her life. Oh, yeah. She never has to worry. Super cool. Yeah. All right. So that jumped ahead on that topic, but... Good movie, though. Good I recommend movie. going to watch it. I liked it. So how are our listeners doing out there tonight? Tuned in to uh, Jess FM and Jess, F Jess TV. Um, we want to play our game for you. Oh, we're going to play Would You Rather. So Would You Rather. I don't know what made me think of doing this with Rachel last week, but we're going to do it now, and I actually have no idea what these questions are. So you could play along with us, and Austin's going to ask me a question. I will ask him a question, and we're going to play Would You Rather. And we would love to hear your answers uh, as comments. We'll comment back, okay? So... He says he's got some doozies here. Oh, some of them are gross. I don't <laughs> know. Maybe I just think that they're really gross, but I'm oh my gosh, vanilla, vanilla guy. Okay, so should I start asking you a question, or do sure, I have to ask go. me one? Okay. Would you rather, Austin? Oh my gosh. Okay, Austin. Would you rather? We're just going out for a bang here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know if I can say this. Okay, I'll I'll start with a. Uh, <laughs> these are terrible. I don't know if I can ask you these questions. Okay. Austin, would you rather be constipated for a year or diarrhea for a year? Those are really awful would you oh, rather. Everyone loves a good poo joke. Okay. 
Okay, so constipated <laughs> for a year, diarrhea for a year. I think I'd rather have diarrhea for a year. <laughs> oh my god. Because I'd be skinnier. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's your answer. Nobody likes being constipated. Okay, there we go. That was a <laughs> would you rather I was not expecting. So. I told you, I got some good ones. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you made me nervous. Okay, well, where's Rachel when I need her? <laughs> oh, she'd laugh her little took us off here. She would laugh and uh, laugh. I love Rachel's laugh too. Yeah, that too. was like probably my favorite part about watching YouTube. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I'm like died of embarrassment. So, okay, there, ask All me right, what you Levi, rather. Would you rather be gay and have everyone think you're straight? Yeah. Or be straight and have everyone think you're gay? Oh, I'd way rather be gay and have everyone think I'm straight. Because then it would be like you'd be getting all the hookups because everybody's like, you're so mask. You're so mask. Mask. You're so mask. Like mask. Dream. I can't even tell you're gay. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so or, or we're gonna get a little bit spicy. Well, and, after I, that one. and I feel bad because your other question was, you, what, my straight or, or if you're straight and everyone thinks you're gay, because I have friends who are straight and everyone thinks they're gay and it gets really obnoxious for them. We have a friend who's always getting hit on by guys and he's like super straight, and it's well. I think that's a little affirmation. There's nothing wrong with a little flattery and attraction. Yeah, but like when the only people who hit on you is the people you're not attracted to, it's got to be frustrating. Mm. I like I like going to the bar because once I go out the bar and I hit the dance floor, it gets late. The ladies all love me and they want to flirt with me. I love yeah, that. So you have like beautiful hair and you're so <laughs> effervescent. Well, I just think it's because I dance to classic rock and they're like they like that. Yeah, they're <laughs> like, or they think you're in a band and yeah. they're like, the things I did to your music. Oh and my gosh, like, don't talk that story again. <laughs> <laughs> I like when the ladies hit on me. I think it's a good, good thing. Okay, I'm scared to read these questions now. Okay, so I'm going to ask Austin another would you rather. Are you sure about this? Oh these gosh. are good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What? Austin, would you rather have sandpaper hands? <laughs> so literally, sandpaper hands or no genitals? <laughs> Is it a thing? Okay, so you can either I have... I got some of these okay. on the internet. <laughs> these are like super weird. Okay, so, so you can either have sandpaper hands... Or no genitals. What are you gonna take? Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's a hard question, though, isn't it? I think I'd rather have sandpaper hands. I would definitely rather have genitals. I like my genitals. <laughs> and then sandpaper hands. Yeah. So well, like, and I would just say, well, wear gloves. Then you would have smooth hands. Yeah. Or like lotion. No, they're they're sandpaper. Like or like silky gloves. <laughs> I wouldn't need like a comb when I was doing hair. I could just comb them with my sandpaper hands. <laughs> yeah. True. Okay. <laughs> Would you rather? This is, uh, this is not the Mormon version I my family usually plays. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is a good one. Okay. If movies were real life, okay, or whatever, would you rather be in Two Girls One Cup, <laughs> or would you rather be in The Human Centipede? Oh my gosh. Okay, these are both very disturbing movies. I don't know if you guys are <laughs> fans. Not even movies. Some of the oh, if, you, it, not, if you're fans of horror movies and ever seen Human Centipede or South Park's interpretation of Human Centipede, you'll know it's a very disturbing scenario. So you're asking me, and if anyone is into real scary movies and horror movies and have seen Two Girls One Cup, then it's also a, a horror shock film. video. So now I, you're asking me which movie would I rather be in, <laughs> or which um, situation oh my gosh. in okay. real life? Well, in real life, I would definitely way rather be in Two Girls One Cup <laughs> than Human Centipede. <laughs> you live through that one. Yeah, if you've never known what Human Centipede is, Google it and then be very afraid and. See if you agree. Would you rather be in two girls, one cup? Because <laughs> one involves pain, one's just disgusting. <laughs> I'd rather take disgusting uh, than pain. Yeah, me too. I think. Oh, oh, gross. How about you out there listening? Oh my comment God. and tell us, would you rather? Would you rather be in, oh my gosh, human centipede or two girls, one cup? Yeah. That is crazy. So gross. <laughs> okay, okay. So I'm going to ask you another question. Okay. Okay. Austin Francis Guy Walsh. That's me. Okay. You could either eat cold spaghetti <laughs> or hot ice cream for, <laughs> for the rest of your life. Would you rather have cold spaghetti or hot ice cream? I would. I think hot ice cream, and I think you knew I would say that. You would want cold hot. spaghetti is gross. I would love cold oh, spaghetti. Oh, the pasta's all in like one lump. You have to like <laughs> cut it into like segments like a pie to eat it. 
<laughs> but a hot ice cream, what does that even taste like? I don't hot know. chocolate? Maybe. Maybe. Weird. It tastes like <laughs> some sort of vanilla soup. <laughs> Oh my gosh, well, Austin, Chocolate soup. Austin, I'm going to have to help you with these uh, Would You Rather games next week, I see. Well, that one's weird. <laughs> okay, no, it's fun, it's fun, it's fun, okay. Oh my gosh, All right, I am so scared. There. I'm so scared of these. <laughs> I'm actually quite vanilla. Are you? When it comes to humor. <laughs> I like poo jokes. Okay, go, go for it. Um, would you rather lick a homeless person's foot Okay. Or a girl's boob sweat. Well, depends where you're homeless. If you're homeless in Hawaii or Mexico, it might not be so bad you're on the beach. You'd probably be like sweaty and sandy. I don't mind. No? I don't I like feet. Or boob sweat. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Austin. I'm gonna definitely say I would rather lick boob sweat. <laughs> I have nothing wrong with the little bit of human body. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. <laughs> I am dying over these questions. Okay. I, I don't think I could even ask the, your last question on this list. <laughs> I'm going to Google. I'm going to Google Austin a question. Okay. So I'm going to ask Austin a would you rather. Sorry, guys. I got to Google my own. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Should I ask you one more? Hang on. No. Uh, this is. Okay. I'm Googling Austin a new question because he wrote out my questions. Oh my oh, god. Oh, they're too crazy for you. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pick one. Oh. Oh that's really weird. <laughs> what kind of ones are you reading? Okay. Uh oh no. Would you rather? These are terrible. Okay, <laughs> okay. I googled gay would you rather would you rather questions. Okay, Austin, would you rather find out your son is gay? Okay. Or would you rather find out after 18 years your son was not yours? Oh, I'd rather find out my son was gay. Of course. <laughs> gay people are awesome. <laughs> Oh my was it mine? Well, uh, I don't know. It depends. In our relationship, you'd have to be one of ours. Uh, right. <laughs> but not both of ours. Well, okay, so I'm sweating from that. Would you rather? I know it's hot outside, but that made me sweat. I think y'all's got one, one more, more question like, for really me. really childish one. No, I don't know if I can handle it. Would you rather all flowers smell like farts? Oh my god. Okay. Or this is, and I picked this one because it's your favorite food. Okay. Or all steaks tastes like toothpaste. Well, steak's my favorite food, so I'm going to have to go with smelly flowers. <laughs> oh my gosh, because I don't want, I need to eat steak at least once or twice a week, so mm -hmm. I can't have it tasting like toothpaste. Well, why did that rock you so I don't much? Know, I, all I, I don't know why that made me speechless <laughs> out there, but for some reason that did, so. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. I really went for the, it was good, it was the good. good jokes today. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, how's everyone's summer going? Has anyone else been going to Henderson Pool? I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I have been. Every chance I can, I'm off to that Henderson Pool. I do want to tell you, though, like something disturbing happened there yesterday. And you're going to love this. This is your favorite topic. S they had to kick us all out of the pool because someone barfed in the pool. Barfed? Yeah. In the pool. So then we all had to get out of the pool for a half an hour while they clean it. And I was like, how do they clean that? Disgusting. Just scoop it out. And no. well, I think it. I think they must pour a bunch of chemicals in and turn mm -hmm. the jets on high powered. If anyone works at the pool and knows how they clean up in a half an hour from one of these disgusting little incidences, um, I was. It was so hot out though yesterday at the pool that when we got out because they had to clean it, we were sweating. And then what happens is you have sunscreen on. Well, I didn't, but my cousin Greg did, and the sunscreen got into his eyes, and then all of a sudden like he couldn't see anything. So it's that waterproof sunscreen. Oh man. And he could not oh, like get it out of his eyes. Me. It was like, if you've ever had waterproof sunscreen in your eyes, you become like, you, you're like instantly drunk because you have like blurry vision and you can't get it out. Hmm. I felt bad for him because it was so hot. He goes, I just want to get in the pool. I'm like, we can't. They're not letting us in the pool. We were dying. So if you are wanting something great to do in the summer, uh, take advantage of the Henderson pool. It's so fun. I'll be there every Sunday. 
except for when they start floating, which we'll talk about. But um, it's only six bucks to get in, and it is so much fun. There's like uh, a rock climbing wall, the water slides, a splash park. Uh, you can bring in your own picnic, your own drinks, and uh, sit on the grass and enjoy that. It's just a lot of fun. Yeah, unless somebody pukes in it and they have to shut it down for a little bit. Well, it just forces you to work on your tan. <laughs> so, you know, I, I actually have a funny story about pools closing down, too. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> I am so scared of this conversation today. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Carrying on with our favorite topic. Oh, no. Please uh, don't. Please don't. I was in Edmonton with my friends Ashley and Terry, uh -huh. and we went. We were going to... Um, do a nude swim at the Bonnie Doom pool, and it got closed down because somebody pooped in the pool. At a nude swim? Yeah. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> so that was like my one chance. I was going to go to a nude swim with my friends and couldn't oh, go because so it got canceled. Oh, so it was like your like first time going to a nude pool party yeah. and that's what happened? Not a pool party. It's just a naturist swim event. Okay. Naked swimming. Yeah. Public swimming. Didn't go. I, I definitely had um, nude pool parties. And actually, the place that um, it's out by Costco. If anyone's ever been like the the road that's like by the college and like the Mormon Church, and then Costco, there's all this house being torn down. Well, this used to be a, like an iconic party house, and this was such a fun house. There was a pool there, and many times it was nude swimming, and it was always crazy. So when I was driving by and saw it torn down, I was like, I had some good good memories there. Well. Memories of a dream. <laughs> um, I see our one of our our, uh, our well our technical supervisor off the set. He's nodding as if he knew that was a party house. Did he? <laughs> I think he. I think he knows that that was a lot of like a lot of stuff going there. on. There was a lot of good stuff going on. You know the house. <laughs> so I don't know why it got torn down, but it was derelict. It was like falling apart. You Aww. look at it too hard, and it's but gonna fall. There was on this you. big pool, and then. A room next to it, you can go change. There was like TVs and couches. It was very sexy. Who owned this place? It was like a swingers' house, I swear. But, like <laughs> you went to all these parties, you never knew who owned this house. I just like, got invited. Yeah. <laughs> I just show up and get in that pool. It was yeah, so much like, fun. Hey, cool. It was the only time I ever got to kind of get, kind of have those adult pool party mm -hmm. swinging sixties kind of times. Interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we need a pool. Yeah, rooftop, <laughs> rooftop. <laughs> So, um, gonna go back to one of our favorite topics, which is Leftbridge Pride. Yes. So we had our AGM. So AGM is our annual general meeting, and it was a big um, switchover. It was just had our 10-year anniversary, and a lot of people they were finished their terms on the Pride board. So it's time to vote in a new board and and get cooking up for what's going to happen next year. And uh, after this year, we had a lot of great feedback, and I know we're going to make a more spectacular year this year and really spread out the events instead of like clustering it all in one week a lot of feedback we heard it was, it was hard to get people to go to all the events so we're going to try and uh, make more events throughout the year oh, okay and uh, I'm going to talk about some of the people who left the board and some of the people who uh, joined the board so uh, stepping down were uh, or finishing their terms not oh, stepping down I think Devin called it stepping down or no that's it in that post he wrote okay so Okay, not they finished out their terms. Was uh, Devin Hargreaves is our chair. Mm -hmm. He did a great job and two years, two years in that term. Yeah, so now he is our our past chair. So that's cool, and I know that he'll be around to give us advice and steer us in the right direction. Uh, and yeah, we had a lot of people finish out their terms, but we had some people rejoin, and we had Glenn Herbst who was a Pride Board member but was gone for two years. He moved to Calgary. He was on the board for six years though, wasn't he? I think so. And mm -hmm. all of our most beautiful decorated dances were uh, Glenn. So Glenn is back as our president for Lethbridge Pride Fest 2019. 19. And that's going to be amazing. We just have such a great group. So happy with everyone who is on that mm -hmm. we're going to work together and just build a, a bigger, broader more celebrated community. It's awesome. And the lovely Linda McFalls, who I can see just joined us actually. She Hi, finished Linda. her term as vice president. And, oh, Linda. Uh, we're so sad to see her go. I would have loved to have seen a lady president. You know, mm -hmm. I'm all about that lady love, that lady p power. Yeah, but the newly elected uh, vice president is the one and only Levi Cox. Oh, here. I'll take over that spot for you, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, I'm um, so excited about your senior pride that you have started and I know you're on the show to talk about Senior Pride and we can't wait to join forces and really push that event because I think that's really unique and a really cool group you've started. Yeah, so let's get that going. Yeah, so more Senior Pride with Lethbridge Pride Fest. That's awesome. So 
Uh, we got uh, DJ Marty Funkhauser. We got a DJ on our on our board now. Yeah, he's a coordinator now. So that's pretty cool. We got Elizabeth back, helping us with their university stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we. It's good to have her. She's yeah. always so prepared. Um, Tyler Jassad, another uh, founding member of Pride, is back, and he's back to be secretary. Thank you, Tyler. I know you didn't want to be on the board, but you're on the board, and it's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. And we got Jesse, Carter, uh, Mac. And Catherine is now our treasurer. Catherine has done Derek. such a good job with sponsorship and just such a kind woman and uh, mother and, yeah, just a great human. So, so happy to have Catherine on as uh, treasurer. Mm -hmm. So. And I know the Sounds the like past a good, well rounded board this year. I know a lot of the past board will actually be coming to our meetings and volunteering and helping. We're not done with all these great people who make well, awesome somehow like awesome. rope Linda and Dave back into yeah, Dave helping come, us come, a little come bit. Come do the parade again. You're so amazing <laughs> at that. So yeah, so that was pretty good. So yeah, we have a good year going on for that. Mm -hmm. So that's fun. What else is new? <laughs> I know what's what new. <laughs> oh. So, uh, we're going to talk now about the parking meter. So, if you're local, this is a, um, an, an issue that's been close to my heart and many of the downtown. And last week, we were waiting for an answer. We, we got our, you know, we got you all the businesses and people to email the city and the BRZ and sign our petition with over 700 signatures. And these are like in person, real human signatures and over 800 positive comments on our walking tour video of the downtown and then all of you actually doing what we needed you to do and emailing the proper people and they came back on Thursday and they have made uh, the suggestions and adjustments to the parking meters that we had wanted and asked for so let's go through some of those positive changes so the new meters are great they don't take debit they take debit visa so I've been corrected on that they take your visa card but they also take cash and the new parking meters downtown you can now every two hour meter is a four hour meter so once your two hour goes in and expires then you can replug it for another maximum two hours so this that helps for businesses like us and the tattoo parlors and just shopping downtown at multiple areas mm -hmm. uh, farmers market all the festivals mm -hmm. so now if you're parking at a two hour meter please come on downtown replug your meter hit your favorite stores Go to the smoke shop, go to the vape shop. Use your coins. Use your coins. Go to Scylla, go to Intrigue, go to Gentleman 3. It's awesome. Go, go 3 Factor and Stella's. So now you can have two hours at, four hours at a two hour meter, and you can have six hours at a three, three hour hours. meter. So you are now able to top up your meters. That's one of the, only the things we requested. Another thing we asked for was smaller zones. That did not happen, but maybe not eventually. <laughs> so. But it's nice, at least like in front of Catwalk, our clients who are there for two and a half hours don't have to move their vehicles anymore. Oh, and same with Alberta Inc. and mm -hmm. um, Rocky Mountain Rocky Mountain Tattoo. Tattoo. So everyone's really happy that Chiseled Fringe. Chiseled Fringe, you can now get your perm and now go move your car. Mm -hmm. It's great. So we have now made this adjustment. I want to say I'm so proud of the city for listening and hearing our voices of the downtown community and businesses. Uh, thank you to the BRZ uh, for uh, taking all those emails and that feedback. Thank you to everyone who, who wrote in, commented, shared, and wrote their emails. It's amazing. So we can make positive change in the community. I know there's a lot of issues going on in our community. I don't want to dwell always on the negative, but maybe maybe next we got to like help out with some of these opioid addictions, which is an ongoing topic here in Alberta and in Lethbridge. Yeah, at least got some conversation happening that's yeah. positive. Positive. Yeah. So we have friends from Arches, so we'll have to have them back on again and talk about some of the, the things that have happened on the show um, mm -hmm. with the with the needles. So Actually, lots of our friends work at Arches, too. Yeah, so it won't be hard. We can have Corbin and, and uh, Graham Black, maybe? Yeah, maybe Stacey Linda back? works there. Linda works there? Yep. Falls? Yep, so does David. Oh, so geez. does um, Miranda. All of our friends work at Arches. There. So, uh, yeah, we, maybe we need to get them on here and have a, a little bit more of a talk, ab talk about that. So meters are, oh, one more issue with the meters is uh, handicap uh, parking or people with mobility issues or disabilities. And what I've noticed, and a little birdie told me, is that they're, they're working on this issue. You can already see it happening. So bigger signage saying what zone you're in and uh, parking for our disabled customers. So that's really important because we have terrible winters here, really crummy sidewalks, and a lot of seniors and 
someone's always like breaking their knee or their hip like and i mean young people too like we have a lot of friends getting injured yeah, this year icy winters icy winters wind. So. so the parking meters is done that's just a huge stress off our shoulders um pride's done grads are done most of the brides are done weddings are well, slowing down weddings will pick <laughs> up again that'll keep going till august at yeah. least but yeah. it's a great year to get married yeah but we've had beautiful weather so far this summer i gotta say yeah totally and we've done a lot of weddings like mm -hmm. last week we had two huge wedding parties on saturday so i feel like my fun. updo game is getting up there austin you do beautiful <laughs> i'll just scare the shit out of me i yeah. gotta say oh. um, every you're, hairdresser you're dreads just, well there's one thing that every hairdresser has that like they absolutely dread doing even if they're good at them it's just something that's not natural and like you know, maybe some people don't like doing perms, or some people don't do like doing like blunt bobs. But for me, updos are like. <gasps> well, here's one of the things with doing an updo. You know that those photos are going to be around forever. It's their wedding, it's their grad. So you're doing hair that is like the icing on the cake. So you always just want to make sure that they feel beautiful mm -hmm. and they feel really good. And, and make it, sure it stays forever, and, stays. and you don't put like. 800 bobby pins in there. Just want to be efficient. It so. is a little bit of pressure. So anyway, I'm getting. Getting confident in those. You do it amazing. <laughs> so you do funny. amazing. You do hair for like 11, 12 years, and you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's been awesome. We're getting lots of makeovers. When this heat happens, a lot of people are chopping their hair and oh, doing yeah. new looks. So, so still they finished their wedding. They've been growing that hair out for two years, they and they're like, off. chop this off. I still want to try and find a way. I know we're doing radio, but we're also doing TV. So I want to find a way to incorporate more of our our beauty and our talents and skills that way into our show. And that's something we're working on. So I don't know. It's going to take a little bit of editing and production, but we really need to show some some of those makeovers and start delivering those tips to you guys, like how to get the perfect smoky eye, the perfect liquid liner, the perfect eyebrow shape. Like these are some topics we're going to have to start hitting on our show because we have so many people inquiring all the time or doing these huge drastic changes and wanting advice on it, like going from long to short and these things. So I think we can incorporate that into our, our regular show. Some sort of like. There's some like corner. small YouTube videos that we can start talking Definitely. about on the show. But again, I like this uh, this idea of 100% hotter for Lethbridge too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to go to a topic that is going to make my mom cringe if she's listening. Which she is, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. So we talked about pot. Pot is a big thing going on here in Alberta and Canada because I think October is the date for like legalization, re legalizing marijuana. Mm -hmm. So October, uh, we're going to have like nationwide legalization of marijuana. I mean, there's still going to be like some rules and regulations. It's not just a free for all. Uh, this does bring up some some topics for me, like because everyone's doing the edibles, right? There and the the oils, like the CB. How do you say it? CBD? CBD oils, which are higher in the painkillers. Or THC, which are more mind altering or whatever <laughs> you want to so. say. Yeah. Well, a lot of our friends are 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 using these vape pens to smoke their weed, and mm -hmm. they're like, I'm I'm at the time when you roll the joint, so. Uh, so I tr hard on my lungs. Though. Well, like, I don't know about. I'm a wuss. I can't do that. <laughs> I, I tried one of my friend's vape pens, and she's like, "Oh, we'll try it. It's like just like pot. It's like smoking pot." Well, Frick, I took this little metal pan, and I'm not used to vaping, so I don't smoke cigarettes either. And I suck on this thing. I was gagging so hard, it was like, I thought I was going to throw up. I was coughing and coughing. And My then brother does that too, yeah. and just, I don't know if he's still doing it, but I tried his vape pen, and I'm like, oh, like burning my lungs, it felt like. Oh my gosh, my lungs hurt. Brimstone. Like my lungs were swollen. You felt that? Yeah. And I was coughing and coughing, and then I was so stoned. Mm -hmm. So this was more than what well, a joint was like. Just stoned, just vaping with like tobacco or whatever. Like oh, the, well, I was. I, I tried vaping with my friend's pot thing. And yeah. She goes, here, try it. So I did it. And she was like, are you okay? And trying to get me a drink, but the damage was not in my throat. It was my lungs. It was mm -hmm. like, this is harsh. I pulled too hard, so I gotta be gentler on that. So, if you're you're vaping and trying that vaping vaping your pot, it's crazy. <laughs> I was super stoned. <laughs> so I'm trying to like you know I I don't smoke as much pot as I used to, but when I was younger I used to smoke a lot of pot, but I wasn't used to this. So, and then okay, so here's one of my issues, and I wonder what other employers think about this. So if your employee comes into work and they're having back pain and they take Robaxacet at the with their coffee or they're taking Tylenol threes or painkillers throughout their day, or they have anxiety, so they take an Ativan at lunch, so they can get through their day. I don't know if I'm, I'm not monitoring what pills people are taking. So, 
it's funny that I have this idea of, oh, she has anxiety, she took an Ativan, that's just her medicine. But if my staff were going outside, smoking a big joint, then coming back into work, and they're like, oh, it's for my anxiety, here's my, here's my card, that's going to freak me out as an employer. Yeah, definitely. Like, but why is that? Like, okay, so say someone's getting stoned on a prescription drug and like taking that at lunch, and I don't see it, but if my staff are outside smoking on a vape pen full of like <laughs> CBD oil or eating it, and then come back in all red-eyed and said, oh, it's just from anxiety. Isn't that worrisome? <laughs> I feel like it's not that different. Really? Honestly, like so if, if you see... Like taking an oxy for pain and then... So if you see you your know. chiropractor goes outside, smokes a big joint, and then comes in and cracks your back because now he's not having anxiety, it like, just kind of freaks me out. <laughs> You're like, he's got yeah. my neck. <laughs> okay, he smells like pot. You know, so I know it's their medication, but there's still a stigma with it, right? Well, maybe if you're like used to doing that all the time, then you're like, okay, you so know, you'd get kind of accustomed. Just like my first Robaxa set I ever took, I was like, holy f, I'm like, well, my class stoned, and then like after that, I just was taking them all the time, and, and it was no big deal. I like needed them at because of my bad posture and like our job so hard on our bodies. But okay, well, I'm gonna ask you clients out there. So if you go into Catwalk Hair Salon and there's I'm going to do your hair and Austin's going to do your makeup for your wedding. But, you know, when you walk into the shop, we're out front hitting a vape pen, getting some big dragon tokes for our anxiety, you know, because <laughs> we're going to have anxiety over doing your hair and makeup. So we're out there just blasting on the pot. And then we sip our coffee, come in all like glazy eyed and be like, let's get to work. Is that going to worry you? Maybe you'd get like some really creative and precise haircuts. Well, I bet they I, would just take twice as long. Even when I was a stoner back in I was 18 and 19, I still didn't get stoned and go to work and do hair. No, I couldn't. I couldn't. So <laughs> I'm just I curious. I tried before when I had like a home salon and I yeah. just couldn't so do it. Like I felt like it took me like two hours to do a haircut. Right. And, and it actually didn't. It was just me being paranoid, I'm sure. But. Okay, well, my tattoo artist, if I walk up to get my tattoo and he's dropping the CBD oil under his tongue because his back hurt that day and then he starts tattooing my arm, I mean, that's kind of serious. I don't think that's the same CBD. <laughs> I, I think don't that's know. like a muscle relaxant, but it doesn't, like, alter your mind. Well, the funny thing is if someone took, like, a painkiller, like a Percocet, and then cut my hair, I would have no idea. So mm -hmm. it's just going to be, like, this balance of us figuring out how this pot works in this world. Of just wrapping your mind around it because if you think back, there was, like prohibition on alcohol and we're alcoholics well i still wouldn't drink though and do your, your professional service so but you know i know a lot of salon people out there like go have a drink at lunchtime and come back that first haircut's gonna you know maybe not be the same you think so yeah people go like have drinks for lunch all the time so if we went to mr lube today and got your car worked on like we did today uh-huh and the guy was eating a big pot brownie, would you still trust him as much? Yeah, because it's not <laughs> going to kick in for an hour from now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you eat that brownie. You change my oil six or seven cars from now, maybe, <laughs> maybe you know, they might effective. cut your lines on accident. Okay, okay well, <laughs> so anyway, I, w I wonder what you were all thinking about the legalization of pot and how that's going to go down. Yeah. Because that, that's been my concern. If I see my staff smoking during work hours, but again, if they were taking a Percocet for back pain or Ativan for anxiety, I wouldn't have known. So it's, it, why is it different if I see them smoking their medicine? So yeah. I wonder if you're feeling that too, because I think it's going to be a weird adjustment for everybody. I don't know what the rules are for driving yet. So, I mean, I don't want, you know. Impairment. Yeah, you got to be careful. I feel like that one would be harder to detect if they're like taking an edible, let's say. Okay, so. The reason I really want to talk about this conversation in edibles is because one of our clients gave us edible donuts from a shop in BC mm -hmm. as a tip. But I was terrified to do this, so we these sat in our freezer for about three months. Yeah, three, four months probably. So yesterday we I got home from the pool, we're at home, and we decided to eat um, these Donuts. Well, like a half of one each. Yeah, so we eat these half donut edibles. So I I have not done this in this manner, other than like pot brownies in high school. So I was eating a new measured out. We went to Amsterdam. I just oh, we did that. we did have space cake in Amsterdam. We did have space cake in Amsterdam. But these are good donuts. But I but they I taste like chocolate. So yesterday we <laughs> each get half of these donuts and we eat them and 
we got so stoned. We we're only at home. We we're not going out anywhere. We we're just decorating and organizing our balcony. But I made a little video on my Instagram, actually, um, probably high in that moment. So <laughs> I was wanted to see because I never have enough free time to eat an edible because they always tell you it's like a four-hour high. So I'm like, when do I ever have that time free? So we ate these half donuts and. I'll tell you, I was like, my body felt beautiful and tingly. It was, it was a different experience. It was a different, like, I felt very happy and very relaxed. Mm -hmm. Our balcony looks great. Our balcony too. looks so <laughs> beautiful. Our balcony looks I so really good. I really appreciated every light oh. that I strung. <laughs> yeah. It was gorgeous. He would not stop. He was, like, hanging pictures. I was just, Wiping like. Wiping everything. I, I was, like. It was so dusty in there. Oh, I was Here. like, I was like, my clothes feel so nice. Like my body felt so relaxed and so <laughs> nice. Shower felt like the best shower of my life. So I understand why people are eating these edibles, but it, it took a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I was stoned for like four hours. I was useless. I, I was no good. You're good. I was good. Lots of stuff. Well, the, so here was the weird thing is, so we eat these edibles and then, and it was a donut. And I don't usually eat donuts. And then it created the hunger. The hunger. Like, we were so freaking hungry. We ate a pizza. We cooked a pizza. And then we cooked egg rolls. And then I think we ate something sweet. I don't know. I didn't need the egg rolls. The pizza would have been okay. Oh, my gosh. So we'd already had dinner. We mm -hmm. ate the edibles. They kicked in. And then we ate a pizza and egg rolls. Mm -hmm. See, I couldn't do edibles. I would be, like, a lot more, a lot oh, bigger. Oh, yeah. You had, like chocolate covered licorice from Superstore from yeah. the pool earlier. I had chocolate covered licorice. Which I'd never tried before. That was delicious. At the Save On. I had um, pizza and I had egg rolls. I went to bed so freaking stuffed but my body felt cozy and tingly. Oh, I wanted to throw up. <laughs> there was so much food inside there. Yuck. I loved it, but I don't think edibles will become a regular thing for me, but it was fun to actually try it out and understand why yeah. they're eating it. It'd be fun to do that on like a, a fruit float. Yeah, I want to do a, like a float down Old Man River. It's actually our next topic anyway, so well, there you go, perfect segue. So, so we do this thing where we float down Old Man River on Sundays. So hopefully next year will be our first float. We have something called the Party Island. It is a huge uh, boat that fits about ten of us. Maybe this Sunday. Yeah. yeah, and then we float down Old Man River to Bavan Park. So we get in after the weir, so we're in no danger of drowning. So don't worry about that. You get in after the weir. We bring cooler, music, uh, maybe I'll have to get another one of those donuts because it's like a four hour float. I, I don't want to like, con, con, I don't want to, <laughs> this is a good thing that I'm, I'm recommending this. So, um, but we have like four hours on the water. We bring umbrellas so you don't get overheated. And we float down to Pavan Park where we have a sober driver pick us up. It's very fun. Mm -hmm. And I get really sunburned because I'm so sensitive to the sun all of a sudden. Yeah, he used to tan, but now he just burns. It's really funny. Yeah. So when you see us floating down Old Man River on our party island, we want you to honk, wave. Next week we'll be doing this. Let's gather up some friends. Yeah. Bring your rope, tie on. We have good oh music. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sometimes if you're in the water and we see other people with boats, we'll tie them together. We became like, like water world. Party bar. Yeah, it's like, it's like the water world where all this like, hey, what do you have on there? I have spit. So I have... I have uh, cheesies. Let's yeah, trade. You barter for them or yeah. <laughs> shoot down their barge and steal it. And then we jump from the bridge into the water. It's pretty fun. <laughs> so that's going to be next Sunday. And then what we've always wanted to do for Pride, and I think we're going to try to arrange this year for Lethbridge Pride Fest, is something called a fruit float. And we are going to get as many of you together as possible and float down the river together as an official event. That's like something we're going to work on. We've got to look at like what our liability is on that, but... We think a fruit float. Glenn has talked about this for years, and so I think we need to make that happen. Maybe it has to be unofficial. I think it has to be unofficial for insurance purposes, but that would be a really fun day. So if you ever hear we're doing a fruit float, it's not affiliated with Lethbridge Pride Fest. Yeah, it'll be Levi and Austin. Yeah, presents. Uh, Glenn. <laughs> Glenn presents. <laughs> um, so that's kind of our, our thing. So if you've tried Edible Pot, I'd like to hear your comments. Did you like it? Did it make you feel good? Did it make you eat so much food? I was still full today because <laughs> that's what it did to me. Um, those are basically our topics. So I want to talk a little bit about some current events. Okay. So uh, London. London. So London was quite an interesting uh, week in London. Donald Trump is someone who's not used to large crowds. He gets like small to medium crowds that he inflates the numbers. But this time in London, he got huge crowds huger, bigger crowds than his inauguration. 
massive. Massive. So people got together to say, we don't want your misogyny. And we they protested him visiting the Queen. Yeah. Well, in London, they didn't want his misogyny, his racism, uh, his nationalism. Uh, it just basically, they were really not thrilled with Donald coming and they flew this huge uh, Donald baby in the air of like him screaming like a baby and I freaking love that thing. <laughs> you want it for a roof. Oh, well then he went around like insulting, insi insulting Germany and NATO. And walked with the Queen, walked in front of her. Walked in front of the Queen, mm -hmm. like didn't bow to her. It's just, it's just, we're all so over it. Like it's embarrassing. It's going to take the U.S. years and years to overcome what damage this man is doing globally. Never has it been that, you know, uh, a, our leader has gone over to Europe and and just been protested, protested. to that degree. Yeah, I mean, he was so insulting in Quebec uh, to, the, to the leaders of the G8 summit just last month and, you know, trying to bully and push around Canada. It's just we're all over it. We're all over your small hands. I think it's going to be and the your G7 soon. Yeah, it's all horrible. But the worst of all of this is, if you follow politics, um, the worst thing is, is that they did um, have said, and they've got 12 people who did meddle in the elections from Russia, and they also are saying they meddled with uh, the Brexit, which is like something I question Brexit in the UK. Mm -hmm. And then Donald goes to uh, London and he starts insulting all their immigrants, and uh, and he's and then he goes for a meeting with Putin, and he says it's America's fault and uh, Russia's fault that there was meddling in the election. How is that America's fault? You should have condemned Putin for internet crimes uh, against London, UK, and America. I found it very it was tacky. It was so sad he didn't stick up for America at all. It's like he goes against these great leaders like Meghan Markle and uh, Justin Trudeau, or, um, and then he like buddies up with Putin, who's really the puppet master here. So. Russia just had the big uh, FIFA Game Awards, so they've had some good press lately, but Russia's been having a, a lot of bad press. I mean, invading um, a country that which was not theirs is why they're out of the G7 and G8 at the time, um, G8. But also with their uh, um, making it illegal to be homosexual in public. So that's my biggest thing against. Well, just they have propaganda laws. I don't think it's illegal to be homosexual there. It's just illegal to show it in public. Show it. But that means we couldn't hold hands in public. We could be arrested. Yeah. So we couldn't hold hands in public. We wouldn't be able to kiss in public or have a rainbow flag backpack. So they, and then it's propaganda. And then not only that, they're taking away gay rights and they're actually even locking people up in jail and mm -hmm. like a camp. Like so, Russia, boo on you, boo on you, and uh, Trump for uh, supporting them and always giving that hands up to them. It's very bizarre. I think they really do have that video they talked about in the hotel. Maybe. It'll come <laughs> out eventually. Trump, I want to see that video. That's the only video of yours I want to see. The one the Russians have on you. So that's my current <laughs> events and rant. I mean, Donald, you're, you're, you might say, this is what you would say, but your trip to the UK was a disaster. Yes, <laughs> it was a disaster. You embarrassed us. Of course, we weren't shocked. So anyway, that's kind of my rant today about that horrible UK experience. For, I'm sorry you guys even let him come there. Queen, I don't know why you met him, but great job on the protest. It was very entertaining to watch. I like the rants they were yelling that I can't say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was a new song written for Trump. It was like my favorite song about Trump other than Madonna's song about Trump. That was my favorite one, but this one might be even better. <laughs> Whoa, oh, don't. I wanna know. No, don't sing it, don't <laughs> sing it. So, um, that's about it for our show tonight. Very light, very simple. So we're going to have, uh, we're going to be back next week with a special guest. I think it's going to be someone I, I promised would be on the show before, but we'll, I, see. we'll got to clarify. So you'll hear a midweek announcement of our, our next show. We're going to mix it up with a guest again. And yeah, I think that's about what we got for you tonight. Try some edibles. Be safe. <laughs> Tell us what you think. Yeah. And uh, we'll do some better. Uh, would you? Would you rather? <laughs> would you rather? No, I don't know. I Let's stitch those. I want sexy ones. I want to make it sexier. <laughs> <laughs> Less gross, more sexy. <laughs> okay. Right. Thank well, you, everyone. Was, you asked for it on Jess FM with Levi Cox and Austin Walsh. Tune in next.